What is a hill you're willing to die on? Radio stations should play more than 250 songs. Less commercials saying they don't have commercials. Correction, 25 songs. When at baggage claim, you stand 3 feet away. When you see your bag, approach the turnstile. What the fuck is that thing even called? Anyway, stay away from the thing until your bag is there, approach the thing, get your shit and get out. I used to work at an airport and fully agree with you. Also, it's called a carousel or baggage carousel, knew what you were talking about but you asked what it was actually called. Say IT louder for the people crowding up at the front. I will not die for my job. My former employer once asked me are you just in this for the money? And I said no, but if the paychecks stop showing up, then so will I. Yep. Recently my job at a housekeeping department has started substituting in a new disinfectant, as best I can tell because of stocking issues, that says right on the bottle that it may be fatal if absorbed through the skin but our uniform has short, non-waterproof sleeves and we only have nylon gloves despite the safety precautions on the bottle calling for rubber without saying anything to us. I haven't complained yet because I've been able to avoid having to use it and I need the job more than I need to complain for the sake of other people who are perfectly capable of reading the bottle, which we're trained to do, and complaining for themselves, but if there ever comes a day where I can't avoid it they better believe I'll refuse to work rather than risk death for any job, let alone one where I make $13 an hour. A child should not have to suffer and starve because of the choices of their parents. Can't tell if you're pro-welfare or pro-CYFD, but I'm with you either way. As a Christian, the number of professed Christians who do not believe this is disturbing. Do fuck is wrong with people. Classic rock is a sub-genre of rock created between the mid-1960s through the early to mid-1980s. It is not a radio format for aging rock songs. Holy heck, yes. The other day I heard Weezen on a classic rock station. Weezer. Exactly. I may love 90s alt rock but it has no business being played on classic rock stations. If you are on any walkway, and someone is coming straight at you, you move to the right, or give them space to their right, in the US, may be reversed in left hand drive countries. If you are walking towards me and try to outflank me to my right, I will walk into you. I will die on this hill with you. There are general traffic rules that apply to every mode of transportation. Walking should not be an exception. If you find yourself walking into people, you were probably looking at them, and that kinda draws people in. Look at where you want to walk, to their side. They will naturally stay away from that queue, and give you space to walk. Words have meanings and I'm not an asshole if I'm confused by what someone is saying when they misuse a word. I see you met my wife. She once got upset that I didn't understand that by watercolor cups she meant the clear ones, the color of water. I agree. A former boss of mine told me to do, task A, and, task B. I thought B would inform A so I started on B first. Boss got mad at me because they wanted me to do A first. I pointed out that they said and not then. Boss replied that clearly they had meant then. Well, it obviously wasn't clear to me at the time. That sizes are small, medium and large. Not venti, not gotta have it, none of that horse shit. You have a small one, a large one, and the one in the middle is a fucking medium. I used to work at Starbucks. People would make a show about how they're struggling over our size names. I would just tell them it's perfectly okay to say small, medium, or large. I speak English and Starbucks. The thing that fucking kills me is when there's only two sizes and they call them medium and large. The Oxford comma is necessary. Necessary, mandatory, and essential. I remember hearing somewhere that the Oxford comma indicates equality in listed things. If you had a will, and you listed your three kids, putting Jared, Josh, and Alex would mean something different Jared, Josh, and Alex. 
In the second example, Jared would get 50% of the total inheritance and Josh and Alex would split the remainder, whereas in the first example, it's split 33%. Insure is to make sure something happens. Insure is to take out insurance on something. Insure is also the shake for old people. For me it's definitely versus defiantly why is this everywhere? Spelling. Once when I was little, somewhere around third grade, there was a game we played in gym called Letters. I don't remember the rules exactly, but it was a type of scrabble thing where the gym was split into two quadrants, one for each team. Letters were scattered around the gym and the goal was to retrieve words from the enemy side and use them to spell out words. Anyways, everything was going fine. We had a really random assortment of letters until I looked at all of them and realized I could spell out the word xylophone. Cool. I arranged all the letters into place when suddenly it felt like 30 children were attacking me with shouts about how I spelled it wrong. It's xylophone. They shouted, their cries falling on deaf ears as I determinedly pushed back much bigger kids than me in an attempt to keep my spelling pristine. It was a battle. It was a war. It was a trip to the principal's office when I kicked a guy in the shins who called me an idiot. I have no idea what was running through my little third grade brain, but I guess for some reason I decided to be stubborn enough to hold my ground. My last memory of this event is me walking out of the principal's office and talking to my friend. I was telling him about the event and dramatically describing how I had definitely 100% totally absolutely demolished a group of 9 year olds in combat. He nodded, impressed, and then proceeded to say, man, that's crazy. Everyone knows, xylophone is spelled with a Z. I got so invested in the story that I felt physically defeated at that last sentence. Oof. Did you manage to spell the word and win points for the team at least? Just because I have super long hair doesn't mean I need to donate it. This became a very sensitive subject for a friend of mine. He always had decently long hair, equal parts rock slash metal guy, and some short hair related dysphoria issues, for years. A few years back, one of his female relatives went through chemo for cancer and lost her hair. So many people including his own parents kept badgering him about shaving all his hair off to make a wig for that relative. So many accusations of him being selfish for not wanting to, why would you grow your hair out long and not give it to people who need it? Strange how it's just hair, only applies to guys and never women. At least in that small circle of the world, anyway. As a guy with long hair I feel this, almost everyone I meet ask are you planning to donate it no it's my hair and I'm gonna keep it. I see people sending emails, memos, documents, etc. Every single day with other people's names spelled incorrectly. Calling Susie Sussy and things like that. Spelling a person's name correctly is important. One of my first lessons in business was me writing a memo, CCing my boss on it and sending it out only to have her call me and say by the way, there are two in my last name. And there was the time I got an employee of the year award and they misspelled my last name on it. If you send something out, print something off, have something engraved and don't spell the name right, you are telling that person you aren't worth the time it takes for me to look up your name. Correct pronunciation of names, especially non-Western names, is my hill to die on. When I was in college, I worked at the financial aid office, and I would often have to call students to make sure they'd done all the paperwork to get their student loans dispersed. One day I had to call an international student named Vyacheslav. To my 19-year-old, Midwestern eyes, that looked completely unpronounceable, so I asked around the office, the people that were logged as talking to him most recently, how to pronounce it so I could verify if it was him, and not one single person knew. Nobody had bothered to figure out how to pronounce this guy's name. So when I got on the phone with him, I asked, and it was three syllables. V. Chase Love. 
three syllables and nobody could be bothered to learn it, and it just struck me as so unbelievably rude. It's his name. Now I work in a job where I talk to a lot of international clients, and I always try to look up pronunciations I don't know before I get on a call, or if I'm still not sure I just ask and try my best to get it right. I'd be a little put out if someone couldn't be bothered to learn the two syllables of my name just because they've never heard it before, it's not hard, it's just common courtesy and respect. And I will die on the hill that everyone should extend that same respect to everyone else. Thank you. I'm a Caitlin, so my name gets misspelled often. It usually doesn't bother me too much because I know there's a million ways to spell it. The one instance I get really upset about it is over email though. My name is right there, just look at it real quick and double check, Jesus. I had someone email me over the weekend asking for a favor and they couldn't be bothered to spell my name right. Doesn't make me feel very charitable. Sometimes I think about being petty AF and intentionally misspelling their name in my reply, but like you said, properly spelling someone's name is an act of respect and I can't bring myself to do it. Subscribe for more hot reddit takes in your inbox, guaranteed.